G-Suite session for this afternoon. We are having one of our mini webinars today and it is going to focus exclusively on how to use Google Drive within G Suite. Google Drive is a range of different apps available in G Suite itself and we've had many previous webinars around G Suite and Google and how to best utilize the features that are there. We have previous webinars that are recorded if you want to go and find those, but this afternoon is exclusively on Google Drive. Google Drive can be accessed across a whole range of devices. I often say this, but it's really easy. You could be on a mobile phone, any sort of tablet device, and you can be on a whole range of computers. Google Drive is available as a tab in a web browser, which is the way we're going to use it this afternoon. It's also available as dedicated apps, and Google Drive will cross-link with so many apps, it's unbelievable, that are on different phones and tablets. So you can access files and folders in your Google Drive that are stored in the cloud and you can pull them in to edit them in different apps in different ways. It doesn't have to be just Google files that you store in Google Drive. It's quite capable of storing lots of different file formats. If this afternoon I cover quite a bit and you're thinking, okay, slow down, Martin, go back. I need to find a little bit more out. The website that we've got here called Teach From Home, I'll click it, is really useful. It was originally brought out at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, but uh, now it's got lots of useful resources and videos. You choose whether you're coming into view as a teacher, as a school, or for family. So it's also quite handy to hand out to parents or guardians of children. Uh, and those people that are trying to get into different apps in G Suite can get some support. So there's lots of different apps we've covered before. Uh, lots around classroom and then links to what we're doing today in Google Drive. You will also have the Google Docs, uh, Google Slides, and you should also have Google Sheets here somewhere. And you click on it, and you can either get a tutorial or you can open up the open up the app that's there already. So there's lots of different ways to get support this afternoon. And everything that I'm going to talk to you about and show you in is here in the teach from home so there's no need to write things down unless you really want to and you will also be able to access the recording at a later date as i said we will pop this recording up on our youtube channel for you to watch with the google drive itself let's jump out of sharing the presentation and i am going to swap over to a different screen I'll go into google drive itself So when you arrive at your Google Drive, it will either be blank or you'll have lots of folders like this. If you're wondering how I got here, it is a tab on my web browser. I'm using Google Chrome. We recommend that you use Google Chrome. It's designed to handle all the functions in G Suite and it's the best browser for it. But if you need to navigate between Google Apps, you can click the app launcher up here and then somewhere in here, normally at the top because it's quite a crucial app, You've got Drive, it looks like that there. When you click on it, it will open up another tab in your Google Chrome web browser, and it will then allow you to access your files. You can also reach it through other Google apps. So if you opened up Docs and you wanted to reach a file that was stored in your Google Drive, Docs, when you press Open File, will look back into your Google Drive and you'll be able to open things from there. So all of the Google apps link back to Google Drive if you're looking for a file. If you want to make folders in here, you can just go to make a new folder or make a new document. There's lots of options hidden here. Uh, you can see there's forms and there's also map apps and there's lots of different apps that you can. You can even connect more apps as well and that will be one of our more advanced sessions. Or you could just make one new folder. So I might want to make a new folder and I'm going to call it test for the purpose of this afternoon. Create it. There is my folder appeared straight away. If you want to, you can also go to the tab in your computer. So if you're using a Windows computer, this is what it would look like. If you're using a Chromebook, it's slightly different because Google Drive will be the only storage that you have because Chromebooks have very small local storage on them. All of your documents are stored in the cloud. If you want to get a file or a folder in, it's the same way. You can either hit the upload button, which I'll show you in a minute, or you can drag across holding down the left button. It will take a copy of the original. It won't take it away. You let it go and it will upload. If you want to do that a different way, you can press new, file upload or folder upload. So I'm going to say a file upload and then it will go into test and there's my test document. So if I wanted to move that in, let's come out of that a moment and I'm gonna go inside my test. 
there I am now inside my folder. So at the top, it tells me where I am. It's like my breadcrumb trail of where I'm going in my drive. I've got my drive test. Let's say, for instance, then I want to have that test in admin or admin in that test, I should say. I've then got the admin folder, which will appear. I'm going to go in the admin folder and then the trail is there. So if I wanted to go back the layer above, I don't have to press back on the Chrome web browser. I just press the top there and it will allow me to navigate around my folders quite quickly, quite easily. Uh, and it doesn't get confusing as to where I am because I can always see the last name on the right hand side is the location I'm currently in and there's nothing here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a file in there and this is a Word file from Microsoft. This isn't a Google Docs file and it sits quite happily in there. If you try and open up other file formats, Google Drive will ask you if you want to convert them into Google formats. So here it says open with Google Docs. So if I just press that, it will convert that Word document over into a Google Doc. Conversion is pretty good. It handles text and uh, fonts and formatting fairly well. Where it tends to have a little bit more of a, a struggle occasionally is if you've got a lot of pictures in the layout, it's quite complicated. And there's the occasional table, which doesn't come into docs quite so well. Sheets, converting from Excel spreadsheets. All the basic formulas now come over pretty seamlessly, but if you've got some advanced formulas in there or using things like macros, then occasionally they will need to be recreated in slides when they, uh, sorry, in sheets when they come back into here. So you can see there, it's just like a word processor and you've got your word processing options in the browser. You've got all the options on the tab there. So that's how it links out. And if you wanted to go open up another file from Drive, you just go file open. And like I said earlier, it will look back into your My Drive. You find the folder or the individual file that you want to open. So I could drill down through. I won't open it again because I'm already in it. But there's the test document I've got open and I could just open it for My Drive. So all of the Google Apps look back into Drive. And that's why Drive is such a central place to ensure that you've got those documents stored. Some of you, as well as having my drive, and my drive is the area that I'm in here on the left, will have shared drives. I haven't got any shared drives created in this example, but you could also drop down where it says my drive and you can see the folders there, or you can see the folders there. So it can be when you start to go into, for instance, there's my administration folder, it, you're in there and you can't see where you were previously. By dropping down the menu on the left hand side, you can always see the top level folder structure. And that enables you to quickly dart around without having to go backwards and forwards up here. It's just what's most comfortable for you in the way that you want to work. And you'll see at the moment, I've got all of my files and my folders in a list view. If you're more of a thumbnails person, you can press the button up there in the top right hand corner where I'm waving it around now. And you get like a mini thumbnail preview of what exactly is there in that folder. And if you want to see that document again, you can click on it and it will come open. Because this is a PDF, I get the I get the preview. And then I could open it up in Docs and I could try editing it in there. But I can also do things like print from here. I could download it, but there's not really a good reason to need to download anymore because you can do everything in your Google Drive. So question whether you need to download it or not, but the option's there if you do want to download it. You could also add comments in as well. So if you were working on a document and I might say, here we go, it's simple. So my comment in there is, why is this simple? Even though this is a PDF, and I want to add the comment in. When somebody else comes back in, there's my previous comment about what are the benefits of cloud. Why is this as simple? There's the two comments I've highlighted, and they stick on the document on the PDF. They're there, and that means that anyone else coming in will also see my comments. They could reply to my comments in Drive, so they could add a reply underneath there. They could resolve it for me as well, and then that makes that comment disappear. So you can mark up comments in Drive without actually having to go in the document. So I haven't had to open that up in Google Docs whatsoever. I'm just previewing the PDF directly in Drive. It's quite a handy way of, of marking and editing a document, or if you're collaborating on something and you just want to get some feedback over, you can do it that way. I've also used it when I'm teaching lessons as well. If I just need to put a couple of comments on to direct pupils when I'm teaching lessons, I'll put a comment on there. They can pick that up independently. They can reply to me on there so I can see the history, how my exchange is developed with them, or they can resolve it as they solve what I've asked them to do. So there you go. That's swapping between different views in Drive. 
if you wanted to see a bit more information about a file, I've clicked on it once instead of twice, and I've got a light blue strip across there. That gives different options at the top, and we'll come on to some of those in a minute. But you can also find some information out on the side. So you've got details, tells you the format it's in, things like the size, tells you the location of where it's stored, which is quite happy if you got it lost. You can give it more of a specific description if you want. At the moment, it tells me that I've got viewing download, uh, viewers can download it. You could change that and block viewers downloading that. But there's also the activity up here. So it gives you the history of what was done to this file. So you've also got a way to find out if someone's made a change and you want to know when it happened and who did it because you want to go and ask them what they did or why, you can look at the activity and that's all saved there in Drive. It could be also as well that I want to move or share something. So it could be, here's my department meeting minutes. I want to share those with somebody else. Well, you can share a document straight out of Drive. You no longer have to email something and attach it to an email and they download it and they edit it. You can share it straight out of Google Drive. So if you press the share button, you'll get a pop-up window. You decide to I invite the people that are in here. So I'm going to see if I've got, no, she's not coming up. I might invite, let's say, Alex, who I work with. I'm going to give Alex a message. Uh, hi, please add your comments. So that works a little bit like an email. Down here, you can see there's the document I've sent across. I can make Alex either an editor or a viewer, or he can add comments as a commenter. So I'm going to say this time I want him to be an editor because I'm going to ask him to add his comments. But I could say I want him to be a commenter because I want him to put comments on the side and not actually change the original document. Do you know what? I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to put commenters on instead. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I want him to be notified. He's been uh, shared a document. So notify is on there. <clears throat> and I press send. And then he will get an email in his inbox. It says, you've had a document shared with you, but also it will appear in his shared list in his drive, which I'll show you in a moment. Here you can see an example of a document that's not shared, and the ones that have been shared have a little double person head next to them, and that means that they're over there. You've also got other options at the top where you can preview a document. That's the same as double-clicking it. So there's two ways to go about that. You could delete it as well if you want. If you delete it, it goes into the recycle bin. The recycle bin is over here. Uh, and it ends up in the recycle bin typically for 30 days as a default rule. But you can, in the Google Admin Console, change the time that they're retained in the recycle bins for before Google takes care of everything and tidies it up in self-deletes. If you don't want to send a share link and you still want to email somebody a link, you can hit share a link. And then here, you can either have it as a restricted link or you can have it as people in your school. So instead of saying turn it on, that would say your school name or anyone with your link. I'd advise against anyone with the link because if somebody then forwards your email on, it means that anyone who has that link can dip into your Google Drive and get access to that document. So I'd either choose your school or restricted. If it's going to be restricted, you can specify the people. And then you can copy the link. And once you've copied the link, you could go and paste in things like an email and they could pick it up from there. So it doesn't have to be that you use the direct share, but the most intuitive way is to share out right from Drive and not have to worry about doing emails on top. If somebody has shared a document with you, I said I'll come back to that. Over here in the shared with me file, here are all the files that somebody has shared with me. Uh, it's our, our marketing account in our company, but they've been sharing videos and documents, but that's what it looks like. It's one big long list. You can't organize that list. You can sort it by things like date or person shared or name, but you can't start organizing that into folders. If you want to then take a copy of it and store it yourself, you just take a copy and move it over to your Google Drive. So here you go. You can add it over to your Google Drive and away you go. But if you open up the version there that's been shared with you, you will add changes to the original that was shared from the person that sent you the link. So be mindful. If you know they're doing something like sharing you some planning, maybe you, you join teacher class. It's a shared job share with a, with a class you're doing two days a week or three days a week each. Then make sure that you take a copy, unless you really truly do want to collaboratively plan, 
And then this is fantastic because you can both be in the same document. You can both go and make your changes. You don't have to have version one, two, and three like you used to. It all saves continually into the same document and it saves back into Drive. You don't need to manually save it. So if someone accidentally knocked your computer, it fell off and it got broken, yes, your computer's broken, but your work's still there in the cloud. So as long as you log into a web browser again, you can carry on merrily editing and it's exactly where you left it. So you haven't lost anything. You've got other options down the side of Google Drive. You can see the documents that I've recently accessed. And at the moment, they are sorted by dates and it goes down in descending order when I last looked at things. You can also star documents. So if something's important to you, if I go back to my drive, I might go into my test. Here's my admin. I could star it. So if you right click on your documents, you've got other options. Let's go all the way through to my doc. Um, you can right click there and you've got other options that you can share directly right clicking as well as at the top. You can share a shareable link directly from that. You could add it out to a workspace and a workspace is like a private area where you can work together. Um, <clears throat> they're fairly new, but they are quite useful. It's like a breakout area. You can move documents in here. So if you want to move them to a different area, you can move them pressing that. So you press move. It's often a question that comes up. Uh, you can add it to a new folder or you can go back and let's say I want to move it higher up. So let's say I'll go back into test, into there, and I want to move it out of the folder that was underneath, and I want to move it here. So off my file goes, but when I go back to the test folder, there it is there, and it's moved it quite happily for me. So that move function is all in there. If you wanted to add a star to it, which is where we started that discussion, you can star it there. So then my important documents, this might be templates I use for teaching, it might be a default letter template for school if I work on the admin side of, of the school. There's lots of ways that you can just keep all your starred important quick reference documents there. And you haven't got to go delving through your My Drive or your shared drive to your school. They're just available to you in a quick and easy way. If you went into your bin, it will show you things that you've deleted recently. And you can empty those out manually if you wanted to uh, highlight those up. You can go highlight and highlight the lot there and then you can go up to here and you can go delete forever and it will say do you really want to delete forever or you can cancel it so you can leave it there as well because google will take care of itself and drive will normally delete those documents after your specified time which is often by default the 30 days up at the top here you've got uh, you've got a gear if you've got certain admin settings but one of the things you can do from there is also get Google Drive for the desktop if you're using a Windows computer. So if you are somebody who prefers not to use it at the browser all the time, and maybe you've got other file formats in there than Google file formats, maybe you're a Promethean school and you've got Active Inspire files, or you're a smart school and you've got smart notebook files, they won't easily open from the online version. So if you download the drive sync, it will add it into your, your window here, your Windows Explorer, and then on the left here, you'll see one that says Google Drive, and it'll just be like a folder on your computer, and all the folders within Google Drive and the files within those will all just appear on your computer. And when you make changes here, you open them and edit them, so it might be that you keep Microsoft file formats, not Google Drive file formats where you can edit them here and they'll just save back up to the Google Drive and you'll see a sync icon down here with an arrow with a little cloud and it means it's being saved back up to the cloud and that takes seconds providing you've got a reasonable broadband connection. It takes slightly longer if your broadband connection is slow. As far as this afternoon session was concerned, it was meant to be very brief, just an orientation of Drive, how to use the features, how to get files and folders in, how to easily share those, and then using that, such as opening up your relevant Google Docs and collaborating. So if you were all in here together, you see little colored flags, and you could all be typing at the same time, and a text would appear on the screen, and it would be automatically saving. And those open up again as tabs in the browser. There are no downloaded versions of these. These just work out of the browser, which is why we say if you're a Google school, maybe you've got Chromebooks or you're adopting Google, uh, G Suite and you're starting to put all your files in Drive, you'll get quite used to suddenly not using, if you've still got a Windows computer, not using the Windows Explorer anymore, but you use the tab with your Google Drive and then you edit your docs, your sheets and your slides as a tab with the dedicated Google app in the Google Chrome web browser. 
I haven't got anything else I'm going to show you this afternoon, but I am more than happy to take questions. So I'm going to stop screen sharing and I'm going to come back over to the meet. Just check if there's any questions. But at this point as well, if you've got any other questions and the ones that are already over in the meet, uh, you can unmute your mic. So I'll go through the questions I've got here first. Is there a limit on space in the Google Drive? Supposedly not. Um, I think I've said this on a couple of previous webinars. There's a guy in America who has an automated program running. It's gradually uploading media files into a Google Drive to see if what Google says about the education Google Drive being truly unlimited. I don't know what is up to at the moment, whether it, I think it's probably terabytes, but it hasn't yet stopped working or stopped receiving those files. So most schools, either shared drive or if you're a member of staff, will have enough space for what they need. Uh, we often get uh, blockages and it failing to sync from desktop to the drive. How can we prevent this? Usually if you're getting problems with you've edited files locally on your computer and then they are not saving back up to Google Drive, it could be one of two things, but most frequently it's either going to be the wireless network in your school and you've got either a, a fairly poor wireless reception and coverage and that might mean that your laptop's either clinging to a, an old wireless point in your school and it might not be fully connected to the to the one that's closest to you if your network's not managed. Or it could be that your broadband is slow and it doesn't upload. Or it could be that your broadband is perfectly adequate, but you've got a lot of people on there and it's not actually as fast as it could be. So the load on the broadband line coming into school means that anything being uploaded going out is slow. Also, if your school isn't fiber yet and you're using what's called an old ADSL line, you will really find it difficult using Google Drive because it, it pushes as much data back up through the Internet as it pulls down. And if you're not using a fiber line, the pushing it up and out can really make your school or your device suffer because the upload speeds will be significantly slower if you don't have fiber. Does anybody else want to unmute their mic and ask any questions or pop anything into the chat? Anybody want to share anything they're doing with Google Drive in their school and how they're utilizing it? Okay. Well, I will remain in the meeting as people drop out, but thank you for coming along this afternoon. There will be a couple more of these Google webinars as we progress.